Mysterious to accept the Emperor Has No Clothes Award, Jay Huger. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Freedom From Religion Foundation, for giving me this award. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I know I probably got it for uh, saying these things on television, which uh, doesn't happen often on national television. Um, but we're the future. Uh, television is a part of it, but as they were telling you, uh, we've got a little bit of an audience online. Um, we're actually the largest online news show in the world. And so what's neat about that is now the host of the largest online news show in the world is an agnostic. So we're coming. <laughs> There are great, great religious people in the country. You know, I, I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Um, we were uh, on the flight in here, and we were sitting to a, uh, next to a, a little old lady named Linda. And she had cancer seven years ago, and she thinks that God helped her to get through it. Uh, now, I have nothing against Linda. I love Linda. And I, I might disagree with her, but there's nothing wrong with someone like Linda thinking that God got her through that cancer. As long as she fought the cancer with medicine, etc., that, that also helps. And she did. And so, of course, nothing's black and white. There are good things in the Bible, turned on the cheek, you know, the Sermon on the Mount, etc. And in Quran, there's a lot of great things, too. My personal role model uh, is a reverend, uh, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. And, uh, and you know, Christians like that have helped uh, the world become a much better place. Is there a higher consciousness? Are, I hope so. <laughs> are, are human beings the highest consciousness in the universe? God help us if we are. <laughs> so one particular policy uh, that had a lot of fundamentalist Christian backing, including a fairly important guy by the name of George W. Bush, was the invasion of Iraq. And there's a story in Jacques Chirac's uh, biography where Bush goes and talks to the French prime minister and or he was prime minister of the president at the time, and says, uh, you know, among the other things that they discuss, one of the things he says is, you know, we, uh, Iraq, uh, Gog and Magog are supposed to come out of Iraq. And Sherrod's like, what? <laughs> He's like, what the hell is Gog and Magog? <laughs> and he literally has to turn to uh, an aide and say, hey, can you look that up for me? And, and this guy's a lunatic, right? Gog and Magog, that's why we invaded Iraq? And Hundreds of thousands of civilians died. Those are real people, aunts and uncles and grandmothers that somebody cared about and kids that they had open. And when they all died because that idiot Bush thought God and when God comes out of Iraq. So how do we do it? Well, we have a, a very important thing on our side. It's called the truth. <laughs> That is why they are so scared. That is why they don't want to hear the argument. That's why they scream, I'm offended, I'm offended, I'm offended. Uh, that's why they've made up a whole fantasy of rationalizations for things that you, when you challenge them on, they don't have an answer for. So my uh, idea is, hey, why don't we if do our best effort? And when I say war, I don't mean like they do. I don't mean obviously with violence or with physicality. I mean with ideas and with logic and with reason. You have so many weapons at your disposal. Just open the Bible to any page. <laughs> so for example, uh, you know, Leviticus is of course famous. Uh, man shall not lie with a man. Um, that's true. It's in the Bible. Uh, and that's what people say. <laughs> it's in the Bible. That ends it. Uh, right above that verse uh, is, of course, the famous verse that uh, you shall not eat shellfish. And it is an abomination against God. Right? An abomination just like lying with a man. Right? If you eat shrimp, you are an abomination. Okay? <laughs> and I, I want every one of you here and everybody that watches this at home, to just it's easy. Just ask somebody. Why do you think God hates shrimp? <laughs> Which one is it? Because you have to pick. You can't say that I'm against gay rights or gay marriage or whatever it might be, because God is against it, and then say, it's okay to go to Red Lobster. 
right? You can't, you can't have it both ways. One, first thing you gotta do, tell everyone, read the Bible, okay? <laughs> read the Quran, read every religious text, uh, because they don't know. There's been study after study uh, asking religious people what's in the Bible. They have no earthly idea. I mean, it's tough to tell what happened 70 years ago today, and we've got TV and computers, etc. They have nothing. You know, Ahmed told Mehmed, who told, you know, Ishmael, you know, 70 years later. And that was the first of the books. And then, so that leads me to point number two. We have to demand that they teach religious history, okay? The history of religion. There, there are two parts to that. Uh, one part is that uh, let's study the religions before Christianity, right? And then when they see uh, a prophet that dies and then rises three days later, they might be like, whoa, wait, I may have seen that before, right? <laughs> and when they see it again and again and again, <laughs> And, and in all of these myths, these fables, the things that we laugh at now, whereas we take our current religion seriously, uh, Noah's Ark is in almost every religion that has ever existed. Which leads me to believe, by the way, they had a little issue with the flood somewhere. Right? <laughs> Historically speaking. Finally, uh, you know, as we're, how do we spread this word? So that, that's the message, very easy, ask them about what's in the text. Well, we have to be aggressive about it. So. Here is the hope that we have. It seems that if you're going to fight religion, everybody will tell you that it's a losing fight, okay? No, people believe in religion. They're always gonna believe in religion. By the way, if you've ever gone to a museum, go look at all the old religions, uh, hundreds that existed. They didn't make it, right? Religions die all the time, okay? Why? Because they're not true. So, uh, all we need is two generations. It is possible, okay? We have to dare to believe, okay? And what you do is you convince the first generation and you convince the second generation, and you'll be shocked at how quickly it can happen. We can all be part of this change. You, you do it in your local communities. Uh, we do it in our, in our local colleges. You just have to be strong enough, brave enough, smart enough to start <laughs> asking these questions and demanding answers. We can be that. I think somebody said this before. The change we believe in. <laughs>